3 p.m. We have with us task force members, uh, Bill Cummings, Paul Manganero, Stephanie Zaremba, Sumya Ganapathy, and Patrick Fortin. We also have with us Lynn Sweet from LDS Consulting, Mina Makarios from Anderson Krieger, uh, Town Manager Beth Rudolph, and myself, Brian Zakelli. Um, the goal for today is to go through the draft report and um, talk about the contents of that report and um, also vote on specific motions that staff has gleaned from, from your reports. Um, I know, I think it made sense. Um, I think it makes sense for just for us to start off super quick um, with legal counsel. Uh, so Mina, uh, just I'll throw you right here on the spot is that there were a number of questions that kind of have gone back and forth about potentially if we do reissue, reissue the RFP, under what circumstances can we do that? Um, and under what circumstances could we, could we not issue the RFP in terms of where we are in terms of liable, uh, are we liable for, for anything related to the RFP? So Mina, why don't you start us off there and then, that, then we'll go on to the, to the votes and the, and, the, and the actual document that uh, was circulated. So Mina, take it away. Thanks, Brian. Uh, the question of whether you can issue a new RFP or whether the board rather can issue a new RFP is based on how different um, the new RFP is from what was proposed before and what Civico and others responded to. Um, you can't issue a new RFP simply to see if there's you know anybody else out there um, with the same um, substantively the same requirements. However, if the requirements are differing uh, substantially, um, either because a new factor is being added or factors are being switched around in a significant way, uh, that would probably require issuance of a new RFP rather than continuing to go down the new route, the same route. So um, I believe, I, I know it was after I, I left the call, but I, I've had a chance to speak to um, different staff to understand the conversation last time. The, uh, the, the issue when we talked about it very early on was whether simply issuing a new RFP and starting over was, um, was appropriate or asking existing bidders on the last RFP was appropriate. And in my view, for more information, my view, that wouldn't be because you'd still be operating under the same RFP, but can sort of continuing a competition that effectively closed with a first and second place winner. However, issuing a new RFP with new factors or, or substantially different weighting of factors would be uh, the appropriate course if that's where the board wants to go. Okay, so super quick re recap, there'd have to be a significant change from the original RFP that would allow us to, to, to issue a new one. Um, a little further on the liability that the town has for going forward with this RFP, that was, there was a number of questions related, related to that. So if we quote back out of this, like where does that leave us? Uh, that, that has come up from a number of different uh, people, Mina. Yeah, so in, in terms of liability to Civico, um, there is no liability to Civico un, until a deal is fully consummated, which includes a town meeting vote. That was in their, um, in the RFP, in the land development agreement that they signed. Um, and so their their willingness to continue discussion is, is with that awareness that um, they, they take the risk that it might not, you know, they may not get to a deal. Um, so no liability to, to Civico. Um, and in my view, no liability if you stay with the existing RFP, no liability to, to anyone else. Um, Penrose is the second bidder there. They have not alleged any um, inconsistency with the RFP. Uh, we talked about the, um, the one letter we received um, or the, the letter we received regarding that. And I gave you my view of that a couple of weeks ago. Thanks, what Lena. about the fact that Civico has invested some probably 50,000 to get to sort of, you know, this point, wouldn't it be in the best interest to try and negotiate some of the, you know, finer points before, because it's time and money to the town to go back out and bid too. Lynn, I, I, I'm not, I wouldn't disagree with that, that it's time and money and that it's cumbersome to get an RFP. Um, I'm staying sort of within the, the four corners of legal liability. Um, I don't think you'd have legal liability to Civico, whether there's, um, reputational harm, um, <clears throat> as in not in the legal sense, this is a small or small age, but sort of whether that discourages uh, other bidders, whether 
Civico is disappointed or you know refuses to bid again, whatever. All of those are sort of strategic considerations for sure that the board will have to keep in mind. Uh, but from a legal perspective, the case law is pretty strong that lost bid preparation costs, unless the RFP was unfairly um, evaluated, uh, don't uh, are not owed by a town or a public entity. All right, so we're gonna go with Stephanie and then Sumia. This is specifically questions for legal about the ramifications of issuing a new RFP. Stephanie? Yeah, um, so two follow-ups to that, Mina, thank you for explaining. I, perhaps I took an incorrect note. I wrote in notes from a much earlier session when we were talking about ground lease length. You talked about how changing the ground lease uh, length likely would require a new RFP and you had made a comment that that could potentially open the town up to liability to Civico and perhaps I completely misunderstood. That's Stephanie, it's hard for me to, to reach out exactly when in that conversation, but so, so we may have been talking past each other a little bit, but changing the ground lease length, uh, could only be done with a new RFP. Perhaps what I was talking about, because I do remember there was a conversation very early on, why can't we negotiate with several people at the same time, which as a private entity, you would and you would want to. Um, you'd sort of want to have, have multiple doors open. Unfortunately, the public procurement um, route doesn't provide for that. And that's what I was suggesting, that we couldn't go back, for instance, and simply ask Penrose or ask when, um, could you, you know, would you do a 50 year lease and then we'll switch horses? We couldn't do that. Got it. Um, thank you. And second question, if the town wanted to make some of these substantial changes, but let's say we decided to um, no longer require parking, we're just taking parking. I'm, I'm not proposing that, I'm just giving an example. Um, if could we continue in our negotiations just with Civico with substantial changes or would removing like a heavily weighted factor, um, would that potentially open us up to liability for kind of totally changing course you know, post RFP process? Um, I want to be careful with the word liability. So I just, I don't want to be well, I will be fussy as your lawyer. I guess that's my job. But um, I, it opens you up to a risk. I, I don't know if it opens up to liability in the sense. Right. Of, yeah. That's what I meant. Does it open us up to a potential claim? Right. Right. And that's I. 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 I understood. That's how I understood your question. So that's how I was going to interpret it. Whether I don't think there's financial risk is in the town pays money, but I do think um, if you were to go back any any time you have an RFP and there's a significant factor that changes either because you went back and asked other folks or because you asked um, the entity that was sort of selected to negotiate with um, to change something substantial, there is a risk. Um, it's hard to quantify, you know, a year and a half plus out how big that one of the other bidders or someone who didn't bid at all could say, had I known there was no parking required, I would have changed my proposal in X way. What I will also just emphasize here, this we're, um, we're not in your kind of typical um, RFP process in the sense or bid process in the sense when, when you have a construction project, if you're asking, you know, build us a new high school, even a complicated construction project, build us a new high school. If you drop a wing of the high school and that was, you know, going to save three months of time and uh, an entire subcontract or something, a a bidder much more easily can say, well, if I knew I, you know, this was a project I could fit into my schedule or I would need fewer laborers, et cetera, I might have bid on it or I might have bid differently. It's a lot harder to, to do that and to do the sort of counterfactual with land use RFPs like this, uh, because by design, the state leaves a lot of flexibility in the evaluation criteria. And it is part of what I think this group has been struggling to, with and sort of was tasked to do is figure out how to weigh competing topics that don't necessarily, while sort of there's an evaluation criteria, their reasonable minds could differ which ones to sort of, which which basket uh, each bidder should sort of put their eggs in, I guess. Um, so that's, that's, a, that's a challenge. 
Thanks for that clarification, Sumya, and then Lynn. Uh, thank you for the clarification, Mina. I, I did have a question um, in terms of just the weighted factors, mm -hmm. um, in terms of what we consider important in the RFP. Is that based on the original RFP, what's considered 3X, 2X, and 1X from that document? And um, how different does it have to be in, in terms of um, what's considered within the normal parameters versus different? Um, well, I, I would say this, I, I don't, know that there is a fine line, first of all, but but to the extent that you're thinking about it, you know, it, those are factors for selecting among the, the proposers who did propose, right? So that doesn't mean that in a negotiation, um, you know, if, you know, let's, I, I don't remember the exact numbers, but design, let's say everybody seems, you know, all around generally content with the design. Um, if, even if that had a high factor, that doesn't mean that if adding parking, which has become a concern once a negotiation started, but was always a factor, adding a few parking spots, for instance, or adding better affordability, which was always a factor um, at the expense of something that might not really change the design, but doesn't, you know, much, you could probably do that. So it's hard to sort of take the weighting which was used for selection and carry it really through to negotiation because the pressure points in the negotiation might be different. Um, what might have been easy for, you know, I, I'll use a you know, made up example. This isn't necessarily Civico. It might be that one bidder um, has no problem for themselves financially satisfying the um, affordability component. They, they, they feel very strongly they can do it. And so when it comes to that weighting, they do just fine, uh, but even but just to kind of eke by on the parking component, cost them for whatever reason a whole lot of money or requires a lot more work from them. When you start negotiating the lease, that pressure point gets exposed or start negotiating the LDA in the lease. That pressure point for them becomes exposed in a way that really doesn't tie to the weighting the town put on. Do we pick bidder A or bidder B over the between the two? So, but 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 to go back to a new RFP, I think you know on, you know there there would be some who would argue even a one X change matters because it could change things, and some who might say, well, that's you know putting a feather on one side of the scale, not an elephant. And so what you know which one, you know how far that goes is is not something courts have really <coughs> um, given a you know given a clear answer to that I could tell you it's it's X you know if you change it twice it's too much. Sounds complicated. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, uh, Lynn, and then I think we're going to try to get to the to the memo. Yeah, I think um, I was going to add just a couple of of, of notes and, and and pose one more question because I think Mina answered my questions, which is, well, what if you do a little bit of tweaking to the affordability, and what if you maybe reduce the retail component, and therefore you know get a few more parking spaces? It sounds like on its face that doesn't rise to a new RFP. I don't know whether or not, you know, trying to take down the Chamber of Commerce building is is, is another item. And I'm kind of hung up on that because there's so many unknowns around that. Um, but I will say that from a practical standpoint from other municipalities that have issued RFPs, awarded a bidder, and then kind of gone back and stopped the RFP process and started again, they do tend to lose credibility in the development field uh, when they do that. Um, and so just from kind of like a psychological standpoint, again, that you've had this one developer that spent an enormous amount of time and money, you know, kind of getting to this point. I just want you to kind of keep that in mind. You may not actually have anybody come back to the table, you know, you may, but um, every it's, a, it's just a very small, small world out there in the affordable housing world, at least. Um, when it, you know, when it comes to these RFPs and people need to sort of, you know, development companies need to make a decision about what's the, you know, the best amount of time and resources that they're going to put into something. And I'm sure that doesn't come across the way I want it to. I just want it to be informational. Um, thank you. Thanks, Lynn. Um, 
Okay, so I'm going to put up on the screen the document that was sent to everybody. There are only uh, two edits. One edit is a suggested edit by Paul that came in to me this morning. And one, uh, and, and then there are two potential motions to be added that were sent by Stefan. Pat, you have a hand. You're, um, you're muted. I do have a couple edits that I didn't send or proposed edits, but um, additionally, I thought we had uh, Paul's motion on the floor from last time that once we heard we, from me, you know, we were going to deal with Paul's motion and get that over with. So is that your first plan? So um, why don't I, why don't I put it up and I'll show you where we're at. So um, this cover letter, um, what the hope is that we would go over this. If anyone had any issues with this, the, the, the kind of informational portion of the, of, of the cover of the cover letter, Pat, what you're talking about is right here is, is our first motion that we would be voting on, which is down here. So we're, 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 we're almost there. Uh, I just want to make sure that everybody is, is okay with this, with this cover letter. This is, this cover letter is you, you've seen this, uh, it, it was sent to you just two days ago though. Um, no changes have been made to this cover letter at the moment. Um, so does anyone have any questions or comments or you can give edits uh, now or in, or um, Pat, why don't you go ahead and then Sumya. Yeah, mine are more related to motions than the cover letter. So I'll, I'll stay out of this for now. Sure. Yeah, no. Well, the 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 hope is that we're gonna go, we're, uh, the bulk of this will be voting voting on motions to get those in, and the rest of this is a little more mechanical. Uh, Sumia. Well, so Brian, I, I just had a quick question. When we had to um, uh, weight all these items, um, some of the items I weighted as high. Um, I didn't find any flaws with it, or I I felt it was okay. Would that would that be fine? And just our report will be given to the select board. Um, sorry, um, you mean that you've, you've made changes from your original report or? No, 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 I didn't make, so for example, um, revenue to the town, um, I weighted as four, but, uh, personally, I, I think the amount of revenue we're getting is satisfactory for, for all the other, um, aspects of this project. So I wouldn't change, um, the revenue to the town. So I, so I, I wasn't sure if that's gotcha. part of the report or. Sure. So I think I think what I'm getting is that um, so these are just rankings in terms of what you think are priorities, not necessarily that you think something was wrong with the current Civico proposal or or right with the Civico proposal. This is this is not really related to that in terms of specifically the Civico proposal. This is information to the select board to say when you negotiate, you should kind of do it in this ranking order of, you know, so um, if that makes any sense of, um, but no, it doesn't, it's not really talking specifically about Civico. It's talking about how to negotiate. What are the levers to pull first and how hard should you pull them? But I, I do think um, to your question that it's relevant if you want to say in your report, in your individual report that although you ranked revenue, you know, high, you felt like the Civico proposal weighed, you know, provided adequate revenue to the town as compared to all the other, um, you know, things that were offered in the proposal. And and the other thing I, I don't, I think it's important to it as well is, you know, especially with the IPCC climate report, I, I think something related to climate change should be one of the factors that the select board looks at as well even if it's not one of the six criteria listed. So I, I think that that could be put into uh, two things. One could be put into your report, just just your specific report. And it could also today be be brought up as a, as a motion okay. so that everyone could potentially vote on that. Um, so the, these are could the- be, Brian, that could be included in, as, as, as a piece of the design too, that you're designing a a building that is, um, it, um, you know, mitigates climate change. Definitely, this is the sustainability portion is is part of that design um, criteria. Um, so, very quickly, the cumulative scores here show that availability of public parking and the affordable market rate mix were the two highest at twenty five and twenty three. 
a small jump goes down to revenue at 17. And then the last three at 14, 13, and 13 are design, ground lease, and, and town oversight. Um, we just simply took your rankings and put them in and, and added the scores up. Um, if any, if anyone do, um, doesn't have any questions up until this green, this green is one edit from Paul. But um, before that, this is this is all. Uh, does anyone have any questions, comments, or concerns um, up until? this point in the the draft and the only thing that the rest of the draft here is are these motions which we will spend most of the rest of the hour on um, and i'm not in this green yet so i'm talking about everything up here just kind of saying the mechanics of when we met what we reviewed um and and, and what the weight of these scores are so any questions or comments about this okay. great we now have uh an edit from paul in green here so what um, what this is talking about here uh, is that so the task force was able to come to a consensus on the overall findings and recommendations and voted at our meeting on, on October 8th to submit five individual reports from all the task members. Each of these reports is attached uh, along with the various materials reviewed by the task force. So there's going to be all uh, a, a number of materials we had put that it was going to be uh, town staff memos and as an LDS consulting group memos. The edit that Paul had put forward was to say that the LDS consulting group was hired and its scope of work was established by the former town manager before the task force was formed. LDS's work was not under the direction or control of the task force. Um, so we can talk about this edit now. Um, and if any other staff members would want to say anything related to this, um, I guess now would be the time. But Paul, why don't you, why don't you kind of talk about um, your thoughts here, saying sure. that LDS was not necessarily under the control uh, of the task force. So I'll, I'll minimize this and we can have a little discussion. Sure, thank you. I think uh, right from our very first meeting, uh, we had discussed this and you know how important the transparency and getting this right this time was. And I expressed at that time, you know, nothing against Lynn and her, her firm, but I thought it would have been wiser um, to wait till the task force was formed uh, have a, get our input and have us formulate a little direction. Uh, we were told by the former town manager, and I'm paraphrasing at that time, that she went ahead and did it uh, for time's sake. And you know, she knew it would take another week or two for the uh, task force to be formed and then we'd have to review applicants and stuff. So I just wanted to be known out there that, uh, that uh, how, how we got to, got to this point with the, with the consulting. And I think Lynn's done a great, great job um, but uh, if, uh, I myself personally would have had some other questions uh, that I wanted to get answered uh, from a financial point of view that, that weren't addressed. So I just, I just think that should be on the record so people know. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Does anyone else have anything further about, uh, about this? Um, yeah, so I, obviously I was not the time manager town manager at the time, so I can't speak to previous discussions, but I do think, you know, certainly through this task force meeting process, you guys have requested initial information and analysis by Lynn, so it's fair, I think, to add that. We're going to add a comment in here um, about the task force, you know, working with Lynn throughout the process. Excuse me, Beth, you said you think it was fair to add that or not? Yeah, so I mean, I think I, I can't, Brian, I don't have the language in front of me, but, um, you know, I think it, we could add, if you're willing, add something to the effect that, that um, the work was not under the direction or control of the task force. However, you know, um, the task force worked. There you go, Brian. You keep typing. You tell me. <laughs> I, I was just going to type what you said, which was re re requested additional information and analysis. Yeah. Throughout the task force meetings or something like that, if that's reasonable. Yeah, but some of that, in my view, some of those, some of that information was not was not provided, such as the all market um, value of the property, and the uh, ninety nine year financial analysis. So I don't I don't want to make it sound like you know additional information was, was asked for and given. I mean, we, we can't deny the fact that we have pages of memos from LDS consulting answering questions. So I, I, I can understand what you're talking about the scope. We can focus on the scope, but there's no doubt that 
<clears throat> you, the group, the task force asked questions. <clears throat> LDS did memos and analysis and gave you answers. Maybe it wasn't the, all of the answers, but there needs to be some acknowledgement that it that she provided so, answers. So maybe we can put it this way. However, the task force requested additional information analysis of which some of the information analysis was complete. And they can reference like well, if you want to maybe call the specific things that you just mentioned that um the, I can recall the specific things you said like the 99 year lease evaluation or we, we can just say the things were not yeah we can say the few things that were not there so a 99 yes. year, year lease um evaluation and then what was the other thing you said market rate right the all the alt market rate value of the, of the property can I jump in though? Because since this is the cover letter that we're all supposed to be in agreement on, I'm a little, I'm growing increasingly uncomfortable with this edit. Um, you know, I, I think just there, there's a lot of factual um, material, especially where we're above where it talks about like the dates on which we met. Um, the select board authorized hiring a consultant. I'm not, I don't remember off the top of my head to what extent they were involved in evaluating and hiring LBS. Um, I, I, Paul, I, I'm just starting to think that like maybe this is something that you would feel better putting in your own report because it was getting a little bit editorial. I respect that, but I think it's appropriate right here where it is under findings and recommendations. Well, it, as this is supposed to be a cover letter we all agree on, um, I, I don't, I, you know, if we're going to say a 99 year lease evaluation and an all market rate value analysis were not provided, I would want to say they were not provided because that was completely outside the scope of what the task force was asked to look at or what Lynn was hired to do. So I just, I think we're going to get, we're going to keep editing each other's edits and I'm just saying I'm a little uncomfortable with the direction it's going right now. That's why I thought my original edit was 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 more precise and to the well, it was very it was very to the point, and just just informing people, not not nitpicking every little thing, but just wanting people to know that this task force didn't have anything to do in the selection of the consulting group, nor did we design the, the scope of the work. <clears throat> what if we just keep the first sentence? Uh, LDS consulting group was hired, and its scope of work is established by the former town manager before the task force was formed. Everybody agree to that statement? Yeah, that, that, that's what I, I, I propose, yes. Would it be possible? I mean, I, I don't know if this needs to be in the cover letter, though, um, because the select board uh, contracted with LBS before we started. And it, it, it just. It just might be better in in our report. Just well, this is part of our report, and it's right there, right there, in, under findings and recommendations. And I think for transparency and uh, especially to the general public, I think it's very, very important. Uh, Sumia, is your hand still up, or is that from uh, previously? Yeah, sorry, I'm just reading it. I apologize. Sure. Um, Pat and then Lynn and then I um we'll go from there. I I get where everyone's going, but this is I guess this cover letter is intended to be findings that we can all agree on. Uh, there's no question that the town hired Lynn, and I I've said it before, I think Lynn is very good at what she does, but the scope is the issue. And I think if if we were picking that, there would have been different discussions on the scope. So I, I don't think what Paul has written is really it's not taking shots at Lynn. It's not doing anything. It's just stating a fact that we weren't involved just so that people know we didn't hire the consultant. And I mean, if you want to say the scope of the work, it, it kind of covers what's the facts. I don't think these are hard facts to disagree with. I don't disagree, Pat. What's well, written now, the, the simple one sentence I'm fine with. I, I, I think everyone can agree that this is the truth. Uh, yeah, Lynn, I agree. Lynn, Lynn, um, Please. Obviously a very uncomfortable discussion for me to sit through. I'm concerned about the reputation of my company of putting a sentence in like this because it 
implies that our company didn't do the work that it was hired to do. And I'm just, I'm just going to put that out there. Um, so do, do, you know, do what you want. I, I was hired by the town. I was interviewed by the board of selectmen. I was interviewed by the town manager. I was given a scope of work to do. I've answered all the questions that I practically can't answer at this point in time. Uh, is this in a place for this sentence to, to, to move forward uh, or potentially have, I, I, I do kind of agree with everybody here is that as soon as one sentence gets in, there's a possible edit and then another possible edit and another possible edit. So uh, this is why staff tried to take a crack at it um, to, to put something in front of you. Um, I don't know if we have to basically then go to a vote for this edit which uh, would, doesn't, doesn't really help any, I mean, that doesn't really help anyone because the idea is that it's supposed to be at least something we agree on. The motions, who knows, right? We cannot, we're, I think we know we're not gonna be on the, the uh, agree on recommendations. If there are people that don't agree with this or it's a three, two vote, then that, that's essentially not what we're, we, 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 we came to the agreement that we were going to all come to an agreement for this cover letter. So, and Stephanie? Brian, could Lynn, um... Lynn, I, I really feel for you and completely understand. And at least personally, I don't want to put anything in this report that would harm your company's reputation or make it seem like you haven't gone above and beyond in answering our questions. So are you okay? Would you be okay with the sentence as written or does that still make you uncomfortable? And I'll say, if it does make you uncomfortable, I would ask, move, whatever, that we take it out. Because... This, this is a letter to the select board. The select board knows what they did, and I don't think we need to, I don't think it's necessary if if it's going to harm Lynn. I, I don't see how it harms. It says the scope of well, work. Well, I asked it Lynn's does, opinion, it, does, Paul. it doesn't say it wasn't, it doesn't say it wasn't completed. Or it wasn't I, done under, I, Paul, I understand, but I asked Lynn's. I oh, asked go ahead, Lynn. It's a, it's a tough question to answer. Um, it is a fact that I was hired by the town manager and the board of selectmen before the task force was formed. So maybe if you add in that um, the board of selectmen were involved with the selection, you know, through an RFP process. So I think that that's sort of, you know, again, kind of gets to the nuances that, um, you know, there's information that was missing here. Is this something that people can feel comfortable enough with? Um, this, the LDS consulting group was hired by the select board through an RFP process and its scope of work was established by the former town manager before the task force was formed. I can live with that. I'm seeing nods, but not necessarily nods from everybody. That's fine. I, no, I, I'm okay. fine. <laughs> but assuming, the, assuming the so. scope was not just coming from the town manager. It was coming from the board of selectmen. Okay. They were the ones asking the questions. The town manager was simply a facilitator. Right. Maybe you say the LDS consulting group was hired through an RFP process and its scope was um, developed by the select board and town, former town manager or something. Since the town manager just um, does what the select board says, should we just say the scope of work was determined by the select board? So that's what I that's what I had put. I put the LDS consulting group was hired by the select board through an RFP process, and its scope of work determined by the select board before the task force was formed. Okay. I I'm think good with I'm good with that. I, I, I hate to say this, this might be the best we're going to get to. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, just to throw it out there. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think it's, you know, it was a statement of fact, and I think it's, um, you know. All, all in favor? Yeah, wait, I, let me, uh, yeah, sorry. Um, Pat, Paul, those were both yes. Um, Stephanie? Yep, I'm good with this. Sumia and Bill? That's fine. Yep. Okay. 
All right, I think we should, um, so the, all these motions, again, were anything in red here is put together by staff based upon your motions. We did not add any new motions. We may, maybe we combine one or, uh, um, but there, you know, th this is all based upon yours. So I think the goal, um, the goal was to, I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read out this motion um, or actually I, I should say, I should take it back. Someone should make this motion. And if it's going to be changed, I'm going to change to change the wording. But someone should um, start us off. Um, and this was a, a, a qualifying question. Um, the way that this is worded says the town should um, terminate negotiations with Civico and reissue the RFP. So this was based upon our last meeting. And the idea was that should we go completely all the way back to the previous, to the RFQ and start completely over from scratch? And this is just a clarifying question from staff to who's ever going to make this motion. Um, or is it really just go back to those pre-qualified bidders, the five that went into the RFQ process? So, um, yep, someone's, assume yet with your hand up. Yeah, I, I was just reading this and personally, I'm a little re reluctant to terminate negotiations with Civico right now. I feel as a town, we have a lot of bargaining power with Civico. I'm also concerned about the reputation of our town uh, to terminate negotiations as opposed to try to negotiate and if things don't work out, do another RFP. Um, yeah, so I think the way that this is gonna go from here on here on out uh, for today is that we're, we're basically, you know, we're, we're gonna vote. Um, so the, the, the idea is that um, we can have discussion on each vote and we, and we can vote, but um, if someone, we're, we're, we're really just trying to start this, we, have a, we don't have a lot, there's about 10, there's about 10 motions here that we've gleaned from, so, from the group. And, and, and like these don't have to be the motions you vote on, right? Like this is something that we put together based on what we've been hearing, the feedback received. If these are not the motions that you all want to make, then it's this make is new motions support, right yeah um but as brian said i don't think the whole point is that uh, some of these motions are are not going to get a consensus vote so um you know we're going to list the folks who are in the yes column and list the folks who are in the no column and prevent that read that information to the select board um and maybe it'd be helpful just to um quickly just say um i spoke with susan verdicchio about just in terms of how this is going to be presented to the board on the 18th. So um, basically, I was just going to do three slides that is like a summary of this cover letter. So it's like who, you know, who was on the who was on the task force uh, when you met, what that rankings table showed, and then the, the um, list any motions and votes that you took. And then the intention was for each member of the task force to have probably two minutes just timing wise to present your your own thoughts to the select board. So everybody will be able to, you know, um, highlight their specific opinions and thoughts on um, on things from your individual report. So again, I don't, I don't think, you know, we're gonna get consensus on all of these issues um, and the, the motions are just um, examples that we put together based on the feedback and listening to you all. Uh, and obviously this is your report. So if, if you wanna make different motions, that's, uh, that's obviously your your uh, your decision to make at this point thanks uh paul you had a question uh, yes i believe this this motion is in regards to my initial motion last week correct yes I believe yeah so. so i think part of what i tried to do and brian and i tried to do with these together is to break the motions out into individual pieces so i think Paul, maybe your motion had a couple of different elements to it about reaching RFP and price and parking maybe. And so instead of having that as one big motion, we've tried to break it out as individual pieces um, so that, because some of those pieces you might get more consensus on um, than others, right? Some folks might say, we don't wanna reissue the RFP, but everybody might agree that parking needs to be reconsidered or something like that. So that's why I was trying to kind of break it out into smaller pieces. But after we put this one last time, because after listening to Mina, Mina, some of the things we're going to discuss, like the, the put, putting revenue in there and maybe changing the weight on the parking could automatically trigger a, a necessity for a new RFP, correct? 
that's possible. This is all about, sh this is all, these motions are should, these are, you know, should consider that the, the, the town should consider, the select board should consider. So it, I see what you're saying, but I, I still think um, if we want to wait till the end, that, that's perfectly fine. We were just trying to follow the, the motions as they came in, yeah. um, which was that this was the motion on the table when we left, even though it might not make sense to put it first, th there was a motion on the floor. Well, yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it was the first part of the motion that included, like Beth said, uh, two or three other items, like putting, putting revenue as a, as a criteria, upping the value on, on parking, and also uh, breaking the 99-year lease into 39, 30, and 30. So, um, Well, would you be willing to um, uh, amend that emotion to try to ne negotiate with Civico? And if that doesn't work out, then do a, an RFP? Um, I, I don't think we can do that based on the legal legal view that we just were rendered. And uh, like Mr. Cummings said before too, and I do a lot of negotiations in my business, I don't see any advantage we have negotiating with one person or one entity. I think we should open it up uh, this way also, because I'm thinking of, of, the, of town meeting and, and the general public, uh, at least they're gonna feel like uh, they got the best, uh, best deal in a negotiation scenario. I don't see where we can get with just us and Civico. And plus, like I said, my main thing there uh, is that we're gonna discuss some things that are, in my opinion, uh, based on what I just learned, that gonna, it's gonna trigger a new RFP anyways. Uh, Pat, then Marty, and then Stephanie. And Paul, this is your motion, I think. So I don't know, I mean, I don't know how strict we're gonna be about messing with this. I do think um, the second point that Beth has added i think this motion gets gets friendlier to the people that want to move this along to add language that the town uh, rebids the rfp and should go out to the current pre-qualified bidders my understanding from talking to some you know people in town meeting that if you use the pre-qualified list you may even be able to have this back on by spring town meeting so i would like to see this motion done now and get it over with when waiting two minutes it's i mean it's just an opinion paul whether whether it's legit or not, or whether they can do it. Selectmen can do whatever they want anyway. I like this motion as town should terminate negotiations with Civico, reissue the RFP to the current pre-qualified bidders. And that makes this thing go fast and it puts it out to fair market. It creates transparency with everybody that it went back out and, and you know, we move on to the next one. Uh, I would make that motion then to just... Uh, so so what, instead what, of what, just make the motion, I, I think... <laughs> You want me to dance or you want me to say it? Yeah, let's do it. I make let's the motion to, to approve the town should terminate negotiations with Civico and reissue the RFP to the current pre-qualified bidders. Is there a second? Second. Second, Bill. Uh, discussion. Uh, Stephanie, um, discussion. Um, I have a comment and one or two questions. Comment being my job is negotiating business deals also. And um, I, I, I would not like, I disagree that the only way to get a good deal is to kind of play the field and go back and forth. There's absolutely a point at which you invest a lot of time with a partner and you continue to try to make that work. And you would have a horrible reputation in business if, if you did not do that. Um, my question, I wanted Marty's opinion since she's worked as a developer in this field her whole career, I wanted her to weigh in on what the reputational hit could be if there would be any to the town reissuing an RFP here. Um, and I also wanted someone to just, the Pat said several members of town meeting thought it could still make spring town meeting, but I don't like they're not the experts on that necessarily. So I'd like to actually know what the timing would be, the stuff that need to happen in a new RFP and, and truly what those uh, times are. Marty, why don't you go ahead first and then we'll go, we'll take it on over to legal for the timing of the RFP. Yeah, I mean, so I have a couple of uh, comments and this will be a little disjointed because there's been a lot in the conversation here today. First of all, if a new RFP goes out, the same situation will apply where the town will only be able to negotiate with the selected developer. So if a new RFP goes out, the town will not be able to say, 
oh, I like number one and I like number two, so I'm going to go back and forth between them because that's unfortunately, as I understand it, the way a multifaceted um, uh, bid process like this works. It's unlike price where you just have one factor and you pre-qualify and you negotiate price. So um, the town will be in the exact same situation of picking a new developer and then negotiating with that person to make the deal as good as they can. Um, the, um, the question about reissuing the RFP, I think it's a question of how much the town um, wants to alter if the select board just wants to go in and look at the rating criteria and re-rank the weighting criteria and not um, change the rest of the RFP. That could in theory be a, a quick process. Um, I think it is very ambitious to think that it's actually that's actually going to happen, get out on the street, get proposals, because you need to give developers, even if it's the same proposal developers, you need to give them time to put their, refresh their numbers, look at what the town said has changed. So you're going to have to give them, you know, 60, 90 days maybe to, to really do it right. Um, so I think the idea of going to Springtown meeting with a new RFP is is really probably not realistic. Um, I think the the fact that the town had a referendum vote on this and the fact that this has been so contentious will in fact make developers think twice about how much money they want to invest in an RFP because um, it does cost money to put together um, a response to these proposals um, and it takes you know paying your lawyers and architects who don't do that for free to help you uh, put a proposal together. So um, I think I think people will certainly dig into what happened and ask questions about how serious the town is about uh, about doing this. And if the town goes out to rebid, they've got to have a really, really kind of crisp and, you know, consensus about what they're looking for to get to get a good group of responses. Thanks for that, Marty. Uh, Sumia, further on the motion. Uh, yeah, I just had a quick question for um, a follow-up question for Marty and maybe Mina. Is there any um, circumstance where the town can can negotiate with more than one developer, or does the town just pick a developer and then they do the negotiation afterwards? <coughs> maybe maybe Mina would be the best uh, to to handle that. I'm trying to think if I've seen an example of that, Somia. There's so as I said before, 30B16, which is what this would move under, is is very flexible, and the town. I think the town may have explored the limits of its flexibility by sort of having a backup proposal. Proposal. Um, there. It, I can't recall that I've ever seen a sort of best and final offer process or two selected bidders, and you could you could structure it as multiple rounds of it, but really the, the public procurement process is intended to put everybody on even footing when they put in the proposal. Um, and then once or once the proposals are open to have that selection among them. So um, Lynn and Marty, I'm not sure if you've seen anything like that. I we, we Certainly, if would want to confirm that there isn't a way, but I, I have never seen it, and I can't recall that anyone else in our office had either. So, the the, the closest thing that I can think of is um, in an interview process. You know, a town might take the group and narrow it down to three, and then in the interview process, the town might say, "Would you be willing to?" try to find two more parking spaces, right? Or would you be willing to think, so you, you could get some information um, in each individual interview, um, but, but that's kind of as, as, as much as, you know, much as I've seen um, in, these, in these kinds of proposals that are based on many factors, not just price. Further on the oh, further on the motion in terms of questions. Sorry, Brian. Let me just add one one small thing just on timing for that. Um, to Marty's point, it, for the developer to do it right is one factor. There's also the side of it for the town to be able to present something that 
town meeting can sink its teeth into and understand well in advance um, takes some time. We were hampered a bit by waiting for the T's um, proposal last time. To the extent that there is a new RFP and a new negotiation, it would also be more difficult, and just to be perfectly frank about this, to negotiate two LDAs, two different agreements, et cetera. So, so beyond the sort of interview, um, initial feeling out that Marty described, to go down a path with multiple entities um, it is also difficult unless you're putting forward um, a sort of set agreement and there's only one very easy toggle being moved, price for instance. Um, but if you're looking at sort of having the developer provide the substance of what is going to happen and you're trying to work that into a land development agreement and then a, a lease, that's hard to do with multiple parties. Yeah, I, I would I would echo that you're not going to get a lot of cooperation under that scenario either from from the bidding parties. Um, it's hard to explain how small a world it is, but everybody's worked for everybody and affordable housing developers all support each other. Um, and I think that you would have a hard time finding, you know, the second or third or fourth bidder on this that would come back and would, you know, kind of chop the legs out from under Civico because they wouldn't want someone doing that to them in another municipality. Um, not sure how, you know, what better way to explain it, but there is a lot of camaraderie. Everyone has, you know, the same goal at the end of the day, which is affordable housing and successful projects. Thanks for that. Further on this motion, otherwise I'm going to call a vote and we're going to keep moving down. So further questions for staff or anybody else related to this motion? Okay, I'm going to do a roll call vote here. The town should terminate negotiations with Civico and reissue the RFP to the current pre-qualified bidders. First by Paul, second by Bill. Um, Sumya. No. Pat. Yes. Stephanie. No. Paul. Yes. Bill. Yes. Okay. So. Brian, believe... Brian will you record the yeah, names I'm, and call them here? Yeah, I'm going to try to do this um, quick. So Brian, uh, while, you're, while you're typing, the, yep. I didn't send, I didn't know, you know, you wanted us to submit them, but in regards to the next one, which goes to um, price as a criteria, what I would have suggested if I sent you an email, sorry, it's clear that parking affordability and um, revenue or price are all kind of at the top. I would have proposed, and I don't know how we put it in a motion, but just, I guess, to start the discussion that um, parking be rebid at a we keep affordable housing at 4X, parking being rebid at a 5X and revenue be billed at a 3X. So they were all kind of following our rankings in uh, in priority. I don't know if that's three motions or if that's gonna confuse the heck out of everybody, but um, that seems pretty much where we came out in parking, I think was a 2X and really needs, you know, it clearly is the number one point that we've gone round and round on. So um, Sorry, I can I'm make just, those in motion yeah. if you want me to, or, and your your second motion relates to revenue. Yeah, I was just trying to see if there was a potentially other motions that we could tie that to, but it looks like that would be a standalone motion of, um, or you could you could say the evaluation criteria should should be as such. You can, I mean, you, in terms of you, you guys can do any motions you want. This is these were just suggested motions. So so just want to make that clear that you're not bound by any of this. This is just us trying to make sense of everyone's um, recommendations and putting them in a motion form. All right, so let me, I'll, in the interest of time and in the interest of compromise, I'll make a motion that hopefully maybe everybody can be happy with. I would propose the RFP is reissued with new rankings and the town should issue new rankings with parking, affordable housing and revenue all as a 4X. So we put them all in the same bucket and we don't nitpick over what wins. That makes Stephanie happy and the affordable people happy. And it keeps all of those as a top priority in the process. And, and when that's you probably mean one Pricing, do you mean rev revenue? Revenue, to the yeah, you, I think it's called revenue in your bucket, right? Revenue, affordable housing, and parking. All as a 4X. 
Or, all or as, do you want to say all as equal uh, instead of yeah ranked equally or something? Yeah. Well, I'm just looking at, I mean, I think what, what Paul was trying to say in his, which I liked, was to keep the RFP and not really throw the RFP out the window because there's a lot of work in it. There is stuff in there about, you know, um, green type of things and sustainability. There's a lot of good stuff in the RFP that's further down. And rather than force them to reinvent the RFP, Paul initially was going to the point, let's just keep the RFP and change some of these core rankings. So um, I'm trying to make less work and keep this thing moving so that, you know, maybe it's not spring. I don't, you know, but. I'm just hearing stuff on the street. So I, the, the staff knows better than me, uh, based on where the, where the rankings are at, if you made them all a four X and maintain the, the, the rest of the RFP to some extent, it just makes it faster and easier. Does the, does this, so is the, your motion on the floor right now, Pat, is that if the RFP is reissued, the town should make the new priorities, revenue, affordable housing and parking all ranked equally in the valuation criteria. Is that well, I would rather say it at a four X rather than equal evaluation criteria as, as each at a four X and then it fits into the RFP better. What I, what I don't like about equal evaluation is they could rank something above it. All of a sudden, maybe design is above it or whatever. I mean, it's, 4X is clearly the number one thing. I mean, it drops quickly to three and there's not many threes and then it gets into two. So, and I'm just one guy, but I'm just trying right. to move it along. And so I'm no, kind of negotiating think, with myself to help, help get us to a, you know, get us to a decision. So Pat, I think, I think I have your motion here. Um, it, I saw, sorry, there's not too many screens. There's a lot of hands up I see. So, um, uh, uh, Lynn, Paul, Stephanie. I'm sorry. Um, I mean, the reality is, is that the um, RFP that was chosen had had the most amount of parking in it. So I'm, I'm just unclear. I, I know, I know what your goal is, but I'm, I'm just not sure that this is going to get you, you know, you know, where, where you need to go. The developer that was chosen had a combination of all of these different things, high affordability, purchase price and in parking. I'm just throwing that out there, just kind of an outsider looking in. Yeah. Um, was, uh, sorry, Stephanie then, or Paul and then Stephanie, I think it was. Yeah, yeah the, the, the original, I, I, I would second this motion uh, for the reasons already stated. And uh, the, the parking, uh, the last uh, RFP was only uh, given a light weight. So this, this brings it up to, to snuff where I think we need to be. And like we said, those are the three major topics, the affordable housing, the revenue and the parking. So I think weighing them all the same at the top of the uh, wait list is, is, is important and keeping all the criteria that was in the original one at their present values um, would make this move quickly and, uh, and, uh, and, and efficiently. So I, I second that motion. Brian, can I just recommend an amendment um, where it says in the last part as uh, but keep all criteria the same. I think we should say as the previous, keep all other criteria the same as in the previous RFP or criteria ranking or something like that. Yeah, so it'd be keep all other criteria, other previous criteria the same or all other. Uh, so I, I, would, I would reference the previous RFP Sure. Um, I think to say like criteria weights or ranking or something. Okay. Is that, is that agreeable to? Um, I, I think that's what that everyone option? was trying to say. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so Stephanie and then Bill. Uh, appreciate the attempt at a compromise here, Pat, but I, I do just want to clarify that the affordable housing people, myself, uh, the, the giving equal weight to cars as housing for people is not going to feel satisfactory. Um, and so that this is an affordable housing development primarily and not making that an above and beyond importance is going to be a hard thing to get past a lot of folks, myself included. So I, if you want, I'm not, I'm, as written, I'm going to say no to this. I don't know if you want to make changes based on that since your goal was to get something we can all agree on. 
Uh, we're first going to go to Bill, and then we'll go back to Paul. I was okay with it before, but I think that adding in the fact that all other criteria weights would be the same would throw out the possibility of eliminating the retail, which I think is a terrible component. It would throw out the, I suspect it would jettison the idea of making the building a little taller to get a little more space in it and anything else, but that's a pretty encompassing phrase to add to that. But having it without that last phrase in there, I, I see the reason to put it in, but it, there's quite a few unintended consequences in precluding other changes, isn't there? Isn't there? You, were you those the, items ranked, Brian, were the building height and the retail component, was that part of the evaluation? Uh, it, it, it was in terms of advantageous or highly advantageous. The, the, but height, the, height wasn't. Height, 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 height wasn't. was not. The, the objectives of the site were to have an affordable mixed use site. So that, that was an objective uh, of the project. I would, if I can just jump in since it's my motion, I would, I would take a friendly amendment from Bill that just says you can keep your wording just the way it is. Um, wait, same as the previous RFP, subject to the task force other recommendations. And that way, whether it's a whether it's whether it's a design criteria or not, but I mean, we want height to be looked at. We want the chamber building. I mean, at least I do personally. So I would, um, if Paul's okay seconding it, just add subject to other recommendations of the task force, and those could be anything. Bill, are you okay with that? Yes, I am. Thank you. Um, all right. Further, further. I'm just looking at the time here. For, further on this motion, uh, in terms of um, any further clarification needed, I see Bill and Sunya and Paul. Uh, Bill, why don't you go ahead, then Sunya. And is down. Sorry, Sunya. I, I agreed with, with uh, Patrick, Patrick's suggestion. Slash Bill's suggestion, works out. <laughs> uh, Sunya. Uh so since this lot is primarily affordable housing, would you be willing to uh, amend it so affordable housing is weighed higher? So you, you can put an amendment on the floor if you'd like to put, if you'd like to make a motion to amend this yes. motion. Yeah, so so there's a there's a motion on the floor to amend this to 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 what? So if these are all four, what would affordable housing be? More uh, than 4X or some specific number? I would make it uh, 5X, uh, and then, the and then the others four X. Yeah. So there's a um, an amendment. Uh, there's a motion to amend this motion to change the affordable housing component to five X with revenue four X and parking four X. Um, is there a second to this motion? Yeah, I second that. Second, Stephanie. Discussion. Um, Paul, you have a your hand up for a discussion. Yes. Yep. Uh in reference to a comment Stephanie made earlier about cars versus people, I think it's people uh, of all types uh, who are inclusive in this. The parking, the way I see it, is supporting the livelihoods of the people that are downtown with businesses, uh, residents from town and from out of town that come and, uh, and um, uh, solicit these stores and, and frequent these stores. So I'm not looking for extra parking spaces. I'm looking to support the current residents and, and the businesses downtown, which are a lot of are struggling. Um, I, I would, in reference to comment on someone's uh, um, recommendation, I think we've ranked them. Uh, we all ranked them, and I don't see how we can put parking below uh, affordable housing when it had 25 points. And, um, and uh, so I would, I would recommend we just keep it as is. Uh, further discussion. I see Pat and Sumi have your hand up. Is this related to this motion, the uh, amended motion? Yeah, I just had a, a comment, um, Paul. So I I agree with you. I I definitely think the downtown businesses need to be supported, but not everyone drives. I ride my bike downtown. I walk downtown, and studies have shown that towns that have more foot traffic have more commerce. So we need to look at it, not just as parking, but as transportation, because a lot of people don't just drive downtown. They might be walking and cycling downtown. 
I, I appreciate that for young people like yourself that live within decent uh, distance of town. That's great. But my mother's 87. She lives uh, uh, up by uh, Vincent Owen. I don't see her riding a bike down Johnson Road or walking downtown either. And I think there's a lot of people like that, you know, outside a mile of downtown that will appreciate the ability to drive down, park, go get the hair done, go shopping. But I, I do appreciate your fact. And it's nice that you're able to do that. Um, Pat, and then I think we're going to vote on the amended motion. Yeah, I, I mean, I didn't make this motion with the intention of, intention of, you know, dissing affordable housing. I think these are all very different revenue, parking, affordable, very different components of a development and evaluated. It doesn't mean one is, they're all in completely different areas and there's multiple other motions we have that go to addressing parking and revenue, including bills, retail ideas, the Chamber of Commerce building. So I, I don't, I don't think this takes away from affordable housing. The lot's zoned affordable, and there's already criteria in here on what the percentages are and everything. So you're not going to lose any of that. And I think we all supported the criteria that were there, and it's even one of the motions just to make those criteria potentially a little stronger from the revenue. But I, I'd, I'd, I'd vote against the uh, the amendment, and just because I don't, I don't think this is is really trying to say that. All right, I think I'm going to call for a vote on the amended motion. So the amended motion in, on the floor right now is to rank affordable housing as 5x and revenue and parking as 4x, 4x and keep all the other criteria weights the same as the previous RFP. We're going to do a roll call vote. Um, Stephanie? Yes. Bill? I don't see 5x referenced in the oh, top. Sorry, I did, I, did, I, did not, I, did not, I did not write that. Um, this is the uh, amended motion. At the should, should we vote on this one first, Brian? Because this no, was, we have this to vote. Was... No, we cannot do that. We have to vote. Uh, we have to vote on the amended motion first, and okay. then if that whatever happens, then we go back to the main motion. So right now, the amended motion is that affordable housing would be five x, and revenue and parking would be four x. Um, Bill, um, do you have a vote? I would vote in favor of of it if the affordable was ranked 4x along with the other prime aspects but to put it here and cause that much extra attention to it i i, I don't favor that okay that's a no sumia yes. reluctantly a no fair enough uh, sumia is a yes pat a no paul no motion fails uh motion fails back to the original motion which is the motion that you see in front of you so if the RFP is issued, it would be equal, equally ranked as 4X for all evaluation criteria and keep the other weights the same as the previous RFP. This is the main motion. Again, we're going a uh, roll call vote. Um, Pat. Yes. Sumya. No. Paul. Yes. Bill. Yes. Stephanie. No. Motion carries. Um, we're going to keep moving here. So we kind of lumped all these other uh, motions into kind of a similar a similar bucket of, of under this is saying regardless of whether the select board elects to reissue the RFP or rene renegotiate with Civic Code, the board should evaluate these scenarios. So um, we're just going to go through here. If there are questions, we can open up to discussion. Um, the town should encourage a developer to consider increasing the building height, specifically to allow for additional units, whether it's affordable or market. So this is, a, a, again, we broke up these motions. This is a very targeted motion. Are you willing to make the building higher by one floor in order, or I shouldn't say one floor, higher in order to allow for additional affordable and market rate units. Um, Marty has her hand up and then Stephanie. I would just say that this one in some ways only applies to Civico because when the RFP went out before, the building heights were all over the place. Some people proposed higher buildings, some people proposed different buildings. So this, in some ways, this particular one in my view would only apply to uh, negotiating with Civico. Um, so. But right, I mean, in addition to RFP, they could include specific requirements about building height. Like there could be an evaluation criteria. Well, then that's a whole different discussion to get agreement in the town about what the height's going to be, because there was a lot of discussion about the planning board at the planning board about what heights they liked and what heights they didn't like. 
And so if, if the town is going to specify a height, a developer really needs to know that. Otherwise, you're just asking the developer to read the zoning code, talk to people around town, evaluate the site and put in your best proposal for what you think you'll be able to sell to the town when you get your zoning done. So, so it would be very different if the town says we want an exact this big building because then you're taking a lot of the developer's <laughs> job away from them and I'm not sure the town wants to go down a path of trying to design a building and then say to people build on this thing. Right. No, I, I guess I was just, there's ways you could, if they did it, there should be RFP or ways to crack the criteria around options for building height. Um, so. I, I think that's hard because this was really about revenue. This, 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 com the conversation that this task force had was more about revenue and it just said, tr explore other things to increase revenue. So I, I don't, maybe you can, I'm, I'm just not seeing how. Uh, Sumia and then Stephanie. Uh, yeah, I was just wondering if in that motion, we could uh, take into account um, the planning board's uh, height uh, limit. So none of the, um, so it doesn't exceed the proposed height uh, by the planning board. So um, just a point of clarification there. So there is a by right height of 40 feet. There is a special permit height of 48. And this is in a plan unit development, which has no height limit. And also if the developer decides to go the 40 feet route, the town's zoning would not apply. Um, so the, the, the point is, or sorry, the question from Sumio was, well, can we put at least a recommended height or some type of a height there? And the, I, the this site was, was pegged somewhere in the under 60 foot mark, uh, but that's not like a vote and the zoning doesn't require that or anything like that. But, but um, that's based upon um, a lot of uh, research of people um, trying to develop around the town and being near the common, the idea of going over 60 feet was, was, was problematic for a lot of people. Um, Stephanie and then Pat. Um, my, my question was the by right height, which you just said was 40 feet. How does that, can someone, does anyone else top of their head remind me what the Civico building height was? Was it at 40 feet? It was 48, uh, okay. which was okay. the special, which, which was, which was the special permit height. So it was between 40 and 48 feet with the highest being 48. So put another way, the current Civico proposal is already nearing or at what the town has kind of said we ideally like in the central business district. Fair? Yes, that, yeah, yes, that it, it's in this, it's, it's within the zoning limits of the special permit heights. It's not outside of the special permit site, which, which others potentially, or which others were. Uh, Pat, you're muted. Sorry, kids. Um, this was Bill's motion, so I don't want to, Bill, you probably could speak to it. I see this as a just sort of a, a general theme that flows through a couple of these motions of, you know, we all want more affordable housing and we're trying to drive more revenue. So just giving developers flexibility and saying to them that a task force thinks this is worth looking at. Uh, I'm all for it, at least creating, getting developers to think, should I add another floor? Because even if just if you had Civico and they added another floor, by Bill's math, you're adding eight units, which turns into revenue whether it's for us or for them and turns into parking or something else. So um, I don't, Brian, I don't know if you need someone to make the motion and second it. I mean, I'll make it to get it on the table if you need to be formal I, about it. I, I definitely need people to make motions. So I'll make this motion as it's typed. Okay. The town should encourage the developer to consider increasing over Civico's building height to allow for additional affordable and market rate units. First by Pat, is there a second? Bill? Second as a bill discussion. Bill, you have your hand up. Now's a good time. Yes, I'm happy with that motion. I'd also be happy with something that even specified of, of a height up to 60 feet. So it's just to give it some authenticity when they started to use it. I think the whole thing that we talked in the very first session was that there may be a need to give the, the negotiating committee some something to work with again if you are, are able to get more units in here or we do without this or we do without something else we can make it a better building overall and give them the tools so either so I, I, 
as Pat read it just now, as you wrote it down, would be perfectly okay as all as well, or or with a sixty foot limitation in there, either one. Uh, thanks for that, Mina. You have your hand up, Ryan. I I, I just I I want to ask you actually a question um, briefly, just to make sure everybody's on the same page, because if I understood you correctly and my memory of the zoning is correct, the only way under current zoning to go above 48 feet would be to do a plan development proposal or is that not true that's true a pud it would be plan unit development which is which is um a, it's a different type of special permit but still it still would be allowed mm -hmm. yes. and, and can you i mean it might just be helpful to in like a sentence or two if you can what other requirements would there be for a plan unit development because i think that's just something to keep in mind that developers yeah. would have to other obligations to get a PUD they want to sure yeah um, and that's a that's really easy it's basically uh providing a mix of different types of affordable units okay so that's it's essentially I, well essentially we'll give you the height if you give us different types of affordable or other different types of units so okay that's that's what I, that was the understanding I had too I just want to make sure we're not you know going without without that understanding sure uh Stephanie further on this motion um I am not comfortable with the 60 feet. I, um, I'll, let's just do this really quickly. I move to amend this motion to say that the town should um, consult with planning, zoning, and others applicable to determine changing the height or some better wording than that. My reason is I we have not done, we didn't say anything about sign. Like on this committee, we we didn't, no research we heard a very brief uh presentation and i don't feel comfortable giving this degree of a firm statement though i do think height could be evaluated i just there's too much of an implication on the neighbors there for me to say up to 60 feet without having heard from like anyone on planning for example is this something something like this that they consult with the planning board and our other experts to determine an appropriate height for the for the site is that um, what you're, is that to what? determine the degree to which height could be changed to allow for additional units so it's idea yeah okay um I wouldn't say that that's related to this motion I think it's a different I think it's a different motion. Maybe to just vote on this one and yeah, just to the extent we're trying to get consensus here. Sure. Um, so as of right now, there's a first and a second um, on the town should encourage a developer to consider increasing over Civico's proposed building height up to 60 feet to allow for additional affordable and market rate units. There's a first and a second. We've had discussion. Um, roll call vote. Um, Sumya. I, I had a question. So these are two separate motions now? Right right now, yeah. Right now we're just doing this first motion and then Stephanie um really had it it wasn't it was related, but it really couldn't be part of an amended motion of this first one, I don't think. I think it's a different motion. So we are voting currently on this top motion here. Um just because um so can I vote it like on this with uh, with consultation of the planning board, or is it just a yes or no right now? Right now, this is just a this is just a yes or no, or um, or you could just like any other amend it. You could you could try to amend the motion as well. But there is already another motion that's kind okay. of in the works here. So okay, so I'll I'll vote uh, yes, but it's contingent on uh, the second motion. If that makes sense. I don't think I, it's a yes or no. Okay, then yes. Um, Bill. Yes. Pat. Yes. Paul. Yes. Stephanie. No. Motion carries. So we have a motion on the floor, but sorry, Mina, uh, you have your hand up or no, Mina? No. Okay. Um, Brian, I'll rescind. You'll rescind. Okay. Yeah. I'll put it in my report. Um, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, six. looks like six or seven. Uh, it's unclear timing if that's possible, but um, let's try to keep moving. The town should encourage a developer to uh, evaluate options for the removal of the Chamber of Commerce building, specifically to allow for creation of additional housing units and or, par and or parking. So again, this is not saying that this is going to happen. It's simply to evaluate the options. Um, so if anyone wanted to make this motion and we can open up discussion um, or go from there. I'll make the motion to approve this. I'll second. All right. Any discussion? Actually, I think this was one of the few I thought was going to be a 5-0 in my opinion anyway. But uh, the town should encourage developer to evaluate options for removal of the chamber building, the creation of additional housing. Lynn, is this, you have a, proce a procedural question or? Um, I do actually have a comment on this. I think that um, asking the developer to spend the time and money to get to the bottom of whether or not the easement is going to be an impediment or whether or not there is an engineering report structural or um, is there asbestos in the building? Is there lead paint? All of those factors are a huge burden to put on the developer. I think when I had brought this up last week, my thought was that if the town wants to take a time out and actually do the evaluation themselves that um, if it is a go, meaning the Chamber of Commerce can come down, then, then there is actually an opportunity for revenue to the town. But I, I just don't see a developer that is going to be able to get qu quick answers during an RFP process um, to say, you know, yeah, I mean, they could say, listen, if we can develop the Chamber of Commerce, we could get this and we could pay that. But that doesn't really get the town, I think, where it wants to go on this, which is, can it really truly be done? All right, so some logistical questions there for the developer, but this, again, this motion was really to just see, just evaluate. So um, encourage the developer to evaluate. So it looks like they're already evaluating at some level. Um, so there's been a first and a second. Um, Stephanie, some discussion? Does this need an amendment to just say, the town should evaluate or encourage a developer to evaluate so that it, there's flexibility on who makes that determination of i think what we're all trying what we all agree is that the chamber of commerce building maybe doesn't need to be there i don't know that any of us had strong feelings about who was going to make that determination uh, in terms of like feasibility so you, the motion that uh, amended motion the town should incur the town should and should evaluate yeah. The town should evaluate or and or encourage a developer to evaluate. How about that? The town, the town should evaluate and encourage a developer to determine options they want to or yeah. The town should evaluate and also and or uh, I think and or is right. And or yeah, I think it's an and or and or encourage a developer to determine options for removal of the Chamber of Commerce building. Um, Pat, your hand is up. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna fight over words. I mean, I think that the mission of this stuff is get it out to developers and let them make their own call. Lynn, I appreciate your opinion, but you know, what's wrong with letting developers look at it? And if they can't do something, they can't do it. But I, I'm not, I'm Stephanie, you'll get my vote just to keep things moving. All right, speaking of that, I, I think I am gonna call a vote. Um, so again, the motion on the floor is to evaluate and encourage a developer to determine options for the removal of the Chamber of Commerce building to allow for the creation of additional housing and or parking spaces. Um, Pat. Yes. Stephanie. Yes. Paul. Yes. Sumya. Yes. Bill. Yes. Hallelujah. So Brian, can you just withdraw this one, do you think, with our prior one, just to save time? Or do you feel like this is a secondary? What do you mean? Uh, the town should evaluate to decrease the loss of parking. I mean, one of the ways was the Chamber of Commerce. I think this was trying to get at other studies outside of the center, shuttle system, like, like bigger picture evaluations of how to deal with parking. Um, 
I think that's what this vote was trying to get to based upon, again, what we've gleaned from reports. No, that's uh, awesome. no one's gonna, this is no one's, up to you guys. Yeah, yeah you don't, no one has to make the motion. <laughs> You know, no, no I'll make, make the motion because that's a good point. If you want to clarify it more, I'll take friendly amendments to clarify, but that is a good, I mean, I think you could almost say the town should evaluate ways to decrease the loss of parking, you know, in the Waterfield lot, you know, all across town or throughout town or something. I would say on the Waterfield lot, including through the investigation of offsite. Um, yeah, that's perfect, Beth. I'll make that motion. No, that's a great. That. Parking development or something. Lots or off site parking sites, off site parking lots. Um, okay, so I have a first from Pat to the town should evaluate ways to decrease the loss of public parking on the water filled lot, um, including uh, the investigation of, of off site parking lots or trans, I guess it was potentially a um, shuttle system that was talked about. Or garage was another one slash garage. Right. Thank you. I would just say offsite parking creation slash parking creation system. creation slash transportation system. Mm -hmm. I think I mean that's at least what I gathered from the reports. So um, Pat, are you comfortable with this motion as as written? Yeah, I feel like transportation systems a whole nother animal because you're getting in a big you know there is a lot of I'm just from a merchant representation. Um, I mean, if you, someone wants to make transportation system, I think that should be a separate motion because to me, that's a whole separate right. animal. So you think it's right. a Pat, Pat I'll creation. second it either way. I just, I think the reason we we're talking about transportation was about employee, the town center employee parking, that there might be like a further away lot that they could be shuttled to. But if that's too nuanced, if you want to keep it separate, I, you have my support either way. Yeah, I feel better about it like this. So. I move the first. question. If we can move the question. Sure, we got a first. All, yes. We got a first and a second. Um, are there any further discussion? All right, I'll take a vote. Um, Stephanie. Yep. Yes. Bill. Yes. Sumya. Yes. Paul. Yes. Pat. Yes. Wonderful, motion passes. Uh, one, two, so we have about four more. It's 2.30 on the nose. I, I, I think most of these are have been engineered to kind of um, have some consensus maybe um, on where we're going. I, I think we should push through, get through it. Um, move, we extend the meeting, move, we extend the meeting 10 more minutes. Done. Um, we won't even wait for a second for that one. Uh, the, the town should encourage a developer to consider removal of the retail commercial space from the proposed redevelopment if it allows more housing units. Um, Stephanie. Can I suggest a wording change before we make this motion? Um, if it allows for more housing units and um, maintains the economics of the proposal. And I say that just because the commercial space um, property taxes as well as rental income are factored into the pro form as we've looked at from Lynn. And so I think that it's important that that change be made with those things in consideration. Um, so I make this motion. All right, so Stephanie, makes the motion that's before us, the town should encourage a developer to consider removal of the retail commercial spaces from the proposed redevelopment if it allows for more housing units and maintains the economics of the proposals, such as rental income and taxes, et cetera. Um, is there a second? I, I I'll second it. Second with I, everybody. Can I just make a co comment? I think it's like, so the words yep. get tricky. Open the up the get, discussion. Yes, please. The words get tricky. M maintains or maybe improves the economics of the proposal. I think that's what I meant, yeah. Yep, that's, I'm good with that now. Further on, the, further on the question, or on the motion, sorry. Move the question. Wonderful. Um, roll call vote, Bill. Yes. Pat. Yes. Sumia. Yes. Stephanie. Yes. Um, Paul. Yes. 
Um, okay, so this was a number of recommendations and we talked about this, this specifically uh, several times um, and the ramifications of it in terms of being able to get more revenue for the town. So the town should allow a developer to change the 80% AMI units to 60% AMI units specifically to provide additional financial resources for the project. So we had gone over this a number of different times with, uh, with LDS um, and, and, and showed exactly how much money that, that was. Um, is anyone willing to make this motion or we can just start on discussion? Yeah, I'll, I'll make this motion. As is? Yep. Okay, Stephanie has a first. Is there a second? I'll second. Yeah. Uh, any, discuss any discussion? Do, do we need this one seeing that the first one above with that puts the uh, top three criteria is revenue um, parking and the uh, mixed housing is do we need that I, I mean the, the motions on the floor so okay yeah I mean I think if, if you're really talking about helping developers figure out how to build a performer this is really important to let them know that you know this is one strategy because it does have an economic impact. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking maybe just leave it open so they can come up with their own ideas and, and, and we get the, the freest market and, and, and input. But uh, this, I do see where yeah. this does make sense. But it's just one idea of, of many that could be out there. Right, but it's I, one I, idea I, saying, yeah, if you want to just go to more 60%, you can do that. Okay. Further discussion? No hands. Um, Move the question. Yep, we're, we're on. Uh, Pat. Uh, uh, sorry, I'd like to take a vote now. Um, roll call vote, Pat? Yes. Uh, Bill? Yes. Sumya? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. And Paul? Why do I always get picked last? I don't know. You're <laughs> last on my list here. <laughs> I, 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 I say yes. Wonderful. Um, there was not a lot of talk about the ground lease length um, in terms of new ideas, there was, there was a number of just make it shorter, but we didn't actually have a specific ground lease length um, motion that's some, that we, that, that kind of was, was, was thought to be uh, agreed upon by everyone. We'd be willing to take a motion right now if anyone has a motion on the ground lease length, but that didn't seem to be a point of uh, 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 being able to kind of agree on that one. Paul? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah I, I had I had a ground lease uh, length in, in my original one, and I was proposing an initial 39-year lease with two 30-year um, renewable leases to follow. I, I think it, I think it gives us the opportunity to re renegotiate uh, where we're at in 39 years. Uh, also gives us a second chance, making sure the oversight on this project is being done, and the developer in the state and everybody else involved is doing. What they said they would do. If not, we can we can pull the plug. So the, your your motion was. I'm confused by you, Brian. Yeah, my my motion would be a 39 year lease. Uh, with with two with two 30 year extensions, correct? That was correct. Be, with two to total 99 years. Right, with two 30 year extensions for a total of 99 years. So. Um, the motion's on the floor, but I, Marty, Marty Jones has her hand up and then we'll go to Stephanie. Um, we didn't, we didn't talk a lot about details of financing, but, um, in my experience, a lot of the public financings are not going to finance on a 39 year lease. They may finance on something shorter than a 99. I've seen, you know, deals at 75. I've seen deals at, you know, some at 60. I think being really specific about 39 is way too restrictive um, and a broader recommendation that it be a shorter lease with extensions. And maybe you get a comp if you're doing a rebid, maybe you get a competition on, you know, what the term is because people propose different terms. Um, so I, and I've seen, I've seen competitions that do that propose a lease term. We didn't do that in this last one. So. Um, we know Lynn and then Stephanie and then Paul. So I did, um, in preparation for the finance committee meeting tonight, um, pull um, Mass Planners Listserv, which is something that we belong to that has a lot of planners from municipalities all over Massachusetts and elsewhere. And we did um, get a response, I think, for at least ha half a dozen towns 
all of the leases were 99 years. All of the leases were for a very nominal amount, a dollar for affordable housing projects. And many of the towns responded that they just sold the property outright. So um, just giving you that information and I'm happy to send that memo on to the group as well. Stephanie? I move to amend the motion if Paul's open to it to be a uh, more generic kind of Paul, like you were saying on the previous motion that the town should um, leave the ground lease term open to developer proposals so that if, you know, basically if 39 years is just not doable with financing, but 75 is, that would still be valuable and wouldn't lock us in. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering if that really would be a, a, a um, an edit to, to, to Paul's to Paul's motion. So I, so I think maybe what you want to say is the town to consider ground leases shorter than 99 years with options to extend or something like that. Paul, I don't want to speak for you if you're open to an amendment. Yeah, I, I respect Marty and Stephanie's opinion. I think that's smart to do. Um, the, the town, the town, you know, we should leave it up to developers and request that they they put their best terms forward. Uh, and the goal is to have a less than ninety nine year lease. I mean, so a revised motion here by Paul uh, to say that the town should consider ground lease terms for less than ninety nine years. Is there a second? Second. Second, Pat. Any further discussion? Yeah. Move the question. Uh, Bill just moved the question, so we're going straight to a vote here. Um, Paul, you'll be first now. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, Pat. Yes. Sumya. Yeah. Stephanie. Yes. Bill. Yes. Um, all right, we have two more questions and that's it. So uh, for, any, for any development on the Waterfield site, the town should strive for the current proposed affordability levels, which is currently at 66% and certainly not go lower than 50. So this was a, a, a motion. motion. This was a motion by Stephanie. Um, I don't know if, you, if this is the exact wording that you wanted. Um, but you, the motion hasn't technically, I guess, been made yet because we, we crafted this based upon your comment. Instead of strive, could you say should keep or should try? Because um, strive means that they can go below the current uh, level. Well, that's what that that's what this is saying is saying that they should try to go to sixty six, but under all circumstances, not go lower than fifty. So it's possible. Well, so Trying, yeah, what I was trying to achieve, Sonia, was if we're adding a whole other floor of units, for example, that we not dilute the ratio, we should try to keep it at 66, not dilute it below 50. Um, well, I guess this is the motion on the, uh, there's a first, is there a, is there a, a second? And Paul, there, uh, there will be, and Lynn, there will be time for discussion here, but there's a, um, a first, is there a second on the motion? I'll second. Um, discussion, Lynn and then Paul. No, sorry, Lynn, no Lynn. Okay, Paul. Yes, I, I understand the intent and it's a good intent here, but isn't this, wouldn't this hamstring the developers uh, in giving this their best and, best and final uh, options, especially when we're asking them to consider revenue and parking as high criteria and the mixed all top three criteria. I think this might just hamstring them and they're going to give us since we put mixed housing as top priority, that they're gonna um, they're gonna take that into proposal anyways. But if we restrict them to strive for 66, but low, lower than 50, they might come in at 75. I don't know, or or or, or, or lower than 50 to, to make everything else work. I think it just kind of pigeonholes them maybe too much. I might be wrong, but just that's just my my thought. Yeah, I think the only thing I'll add to that is that the RFP the previous RFP and the votes that we've said now that it would generally stay the same, which is at least 50% affordable. 
So that, that it actually is in line with the current uh, RFP with a preference of keeping it at 66. Um, okay, thank you. Pat, Pat? If, uh, sorry, that was exactly my question. So that the yep. original, this is kind of basically taking the Civico, isn't Civico at 66 and then the RFP's at 50 right now? Is this following the terms that we kind of exactly. have? Exactly, exactly, correct. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you, Stephanie. You got my vote. Um, all right. Um, any further discussion around keeping the percentage of affordability the same? Um, all right, Sumya? Yes. Paul? Yes. Bill? Yes. Pat? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. All right. Um, last, last motion. Well, Brian, can I make another motion about um, the IPCC report? To sure. Yeah, no, um, yes. Um, let's get through this one and we'll put the, we'll put that motion next. Um, the affordable units sh should cover a range of affordability covering 30 to 60% of AMI, both to maximize affordability and to best leverage subsidies and tax credits in order to maximize the economics of the development. This is not to prevent 80% AMI units, but simply should not be all 80% AMI units like a traditional 40. Brian, I think this is where I was hoping that you and Beth would have the wording. Um, I, this was can my- we, Can we go back to the one we voted on the other AMI? It's weird. Uh, so we said the town the, should allow a developer to change 80% AMI to 60% AMI to provide additional financial resources. Right, and then the, this is saying that to um, basically not all be, I think what you're trying to say is that, well, right now under the current proposal, there are no 80%, Stephanie, that, that that's what the votes, the votes show today that there will be no 80% AMI units. So does that change how you're, Feeling about this motion, I I am totally open. Like I, I think it can be left open. I think if a developer can come with better economics and have eighty percent AMI, like not take that suggestion to go to sixty because that was very specific to Civico's proposal. My point was, I and and the folks I'm talking, we don't want to see a development of all eighty percent AMI. We want to see that range of AMI authority in part because we, we know those vouchers are highly valuable and those cover the lower AMI, but really then, doesn't uh, I think I would focus on your last sentence there. Um, that sure. Like the development should not all be all 80% AMI, like a traditional 40B, something like that. Right, I, I think really what it is is saying this, the affordable units should cover a range of affordability covering 30 to 80% of AMI, both to maximize all these things. And this is not to prevent this is really to prevent all units of 80% of AMI. So I can change that. Really, this is to prevent um, a building of all 80% AMI units, period. And Stephanie, what's the, why you, why do you want to avoid that? Just so I understand it. You're muting, Stephanie. Sorry. Sorry. Um, covers a better diversity of incomes and serves more of the community. The idea is that we also have other 40 Bs that are all, all 80% and we don't really have anything in the 30 or the 60. So um, Stephanie, does this, does this um, as written co um, correspond to what you're talking about? Yes. Your motion. Is there a second? I can second it. Second, Pat. Further discussion? Move it. Oh, moved. Um, I'll take a roll and call vote. Sumia? Yes. Paul? Yes. Pat? Yes. Bill? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. Um, it looks like we had one more motion that Sumia wanted to put forward. Um, I'll just start a new thing if you want to take the floor, yeah. Sumia, and and talk yeah. about what yeah. you're interested in. So I'd like to make a motion uh, for the select board to um, 
uh, highly consider uh, climate change uh, in light of the IPCC uh, report as a uh, important design feature in the selection criteria. Um, uh, this is, do you have a date again? Sorry for this report uh, that I did. So the uh, 2021. Okay. Uh, I okay. See report mm -hmm. uh, in the selection criteria to essentially include um, uh, building design for uh, decreasing CO2 emissions. Using potentially like an all electric building is, is that yeah. is that okay? So the motion on the floor That's similar to what Civico is doing already, but to have those in the other developments as well. Um, all right, so there is a motion on the floor by Sumia to uh, for the select. Uh oh. I mean, I thought I was in trouble before, but sorry. Um, I second that. <laughs> Someone's phone strenuously objecting. Yeah. All right. So um, we have a first and a second. Uh, for this motion related to an all electric building um, to not to not lose that sustainability aspects of the of the, uh, uh, of, of the structure um, first by Sumia, second by Stephanie is there are there any further questions about um, further discussion about this motion I see Paul and Pat's hand up and I'm unsure if that's related to this I do have a question yes because it looks like uh, this is already in the RFP, as far as I can tell, at a 3x. Uh, maybe Just, I'm reading it wrong, but sustainability it's, highly, is, it's ranked higher than parking was before. Sustainability is definitely a part um, is definitely a part of the evaluation criteria. Um, it's possible, yeah. So and I, I'm not I, against this, but it seems like it's already. I mean, maybe the better motion would be to not lower the priority. It's in as a 3X, which to me seems pretty high. It's right below affordable. I mean, I don't know how much higher you could go. Um, yeah, I definitely see what you're saying, Pat. It's really to um, make the self select board aware that uh, sustainability and design is extremely important, as well as the other uh, factors that we're, uh, we're discussing. Simply because that was not really one of the six that we, it was is part of the design criteria, but was not fully discussed in this capacity. Is that really what yeah, you're? Yeah, yeah, pretty much because I think designing for climate is a little different from design in general because design takes into account the types of units you have, whether how much parking you have, um, retail versus residential, and this is uh, strictly uh, so really. Sumia, then if you if you don't mind, I think I'm going to do this. Then I think I'll say continue okay. to highly consider climate change as a an important evaluation criteria. Something something like that. Continue to um, consider climate change um, as an important design feature of the selection criteria. Um, I'm not against this, but we, I mean, earlier we voted to keep the criteria. So maybe you could even say that it's not mentioned in the sustainability provision. I mean, I, I think a simpler, and I'm not trying to be, I'm trying to almost help you that they add climate change to the proposed sustainability objective so that it's directly mentioned. Because it is a three X, so you're pretty high up. So if they add climate change to the pro proposed design sustainability objectives, it might give you more cover and might not cover, but it might, because it is not mentioned in the sustainability provisions as a criteria. It's your motion, but just whatever. Yeah. How about, how about, is this, how about this? Continue to consider sustainability and climate change as an important design feature of the selection criteria using potentially all electric building under the current design? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so. I'm not sure why you would say under the current proposal because this is well, this has to do with the RFP. 
Right. So I think yeah, I was trying to incorporate the idea of an all electric building, which is what Civico is proposing. So I didn't know if we wanted to mention that. We don't have to. Um, I don't have I don't have any problem with it. I do have a problem with staying on any longer though, but if this is the last <laughs> vote, I'm ready to get off. But otherwise uh, I'll leave my positive vote. Fair enough. Um, so the motion on the floor by Sumia is to continue to consider sustainability and climate change as an important design feature of the selection criteria using a potentially all electric building um, on the site. Good. Great. Sumia, uh, Sumia first, seconded, no more discussion. Um, Bill. Yes. Paul. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Sumia. I yes. beat you, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Pat. Yes. Stephanie. Yes. All right, folks. Awesome. Um, we were a little bit over, but um, believe we have fulfilled our charge. I believe we did do all the things that we were set out to do over the past eight meetings, as well as today. And basically wanted to thank everybody for your time. Um, uh, Important question. I, yeah. Yes. Is it, does, if, if we final reports from each of us as attachments, when do you need those by? I'm going to pass that to Beth. So this has to go right onto the 14th, correct? So, the... Yeah, so the um, we need to have a final, we, Brian and I, need to have a final document together by the end of the day, Thursday. So um, I think if we got your final reports by like 9 a.m., I think Brian, what your schedule is Thursday. Um, Early is better. 9 a.m., 8 a.m., like... I assume people, you know, probably want tonight and Wednesday night to work on any finalization, but, you know, earliest in the morning on Thursday morning, you can get them to us, I think, is good. Um, and and all, all we're going to do is put those in, the, we're going to attach them, we're going to take your reports and we're going to put them behind this cover letter. I mean, like, the, we're, we're not going to be reviewing them. We're not going to be doing anything. It's your reports. We're just putting them in there. Brian, you did a nice job of hurting us all right along where you wanted yeah. us today. Excellent, excellent job, Brian. Thank you all very much. I got to run. No worries. Thanks so much for your time, Bill. Thank you. All. I, I just wanted to repeat, uh, you know, uh, Bill's sentiments. I also wanted to say uh, it's been a pleasure serving on this, even though it's a different group of different ideas, different uh, philosophies, but hopefully it shows the town that the different groups can come together and work together and uh, come to some kind of compromise and, and, and do it fairly, respectfully, and uh, for the betterment of the whole town. So it's been a pleasure, folks. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Take care. Thank Have you. a good day. We'll see you Bye. soon.